I'll take that. So we're in this sort of looser orbit. And this is just to circularize. And shut down. Well, it's good enough for me. And in fact, they had it a little bit off anyway. <laughs> As it turns out, it wasn't quite correct. Now, I, 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 uh, looking at it, I probably should have stayed with the initial inclination. You can see thing. I lifted my orbit up, and it turns out we didn't have to do that. So I'm going to correct that. As far as delta v is concerned, we currently read 653 here with the lunar module attached. We need 800 to get back, but that's only with the command and service module. So we should have enough uh, to do a correction. Or you could decide to do the correction with the lunar module on the initial descent burn. Well, that's more than I'd like it to be. I think I would normally reserve about a third of the tanks in order to get back. So we're cutting it close. This inclination correction shouldn't be necessary. It's just a matter of... I probably shouldn't have done the correction initially when we entered lunar orbit at all. Uh, and entered lunar SOI. Also, I've corrected like this, but maybe we should wait a while before landing so that's in daylight. Then again, we did arrive late, and so it's actually already July 21st. We are supposed to land on July 20th. The correct landing time and we are late. The correct landing time is July 20th at 2017 UTC. So 8.17 PM if you'd like UTC, but um, we were late. So I'll just land, but it's weird that the lighting situation is so dark it seems. So over here, we are going to make sure that Two Kerbals go into the Lunar Module. I'm going to use Ship Manifest for that. And we'll have Jeb and Bill. With Bob staying with the Command Module. Make sure that there's food, water, and oxygen, of course. And then with the docking mechanism undock, activate the RCS here, back off, probably kill rotation would be good. If you want to do the landing gear deployment like they did, after a little while, rotate. And then when you're sideways, press G. So there we go. Then the command module can see the landing gear deploy. And verify that. OK. So this is the landing site. And we're going around. And I'm going to see if from this orbit my landing script can actually land us or not. The landing script has to be closer than 180 degrees away from the target. But before I activate it, I'm going to save because I'm not sure this is going to work from this orbit. Again, normally I'm lower. Okay. So I'll leave that out, but it's KOS time again. Okay, it handles everything else. It's actually shading a little bit to one side because it knows that we're not quite in line with the target. And it just gets to where it is suborbital. I mean that it has a negative periapsis. Okay, then we can time warp. It would be a lot easier if you just landed it manually. Delta V wise, it's pretty easy. Um, well, it's not reading the Delta V quite right here. Let me just lock this. It's still not reading the Delta V quite right. Now, why is that? Okay, here we go. So, there is still, yeah, it's a separator. 
Okay, don't know why I was confused, but 2,522 meters per second is what we have right now. And the minimum, of course, is just to get rid of the speed, which is 1,600. That means you've got 900, quote-unquote, extra. Okay, we've ignited. It is still leaning to one side in order to correct itself. And... It's got the engines at about 10%, the bottom of the thrust range. And that, that was how it was initially as well. And at a certain point, it'll throttle up. But for this part, it uh, throttled down for a while. It looks like it's at zero, but it's not. And that's because the minimum throttle for this is about 10%. So it's about 4.7. Oh, that's a little bit more than 10%. Okay, and now it might throttle up. Oh, well, consider it briefly. Anyway, this part I let it figure out because we don't want it to reignite. Uh, now, nowadays, with 20 ignitions on this thing, it's easier. But initially, there was only three ignitions. And then it's just very important for the KOS script to not turn the engine off. So as much throttling as it wants to do, I'm fine with. It is a long, long burn with this. Taking a look at the burn time, we've got 8 minutes here, still, and some of that is with it throttled down, so... If we take a look at surface info, I don't have my MechJeb windows configured like I normally would. Uh, there's a lot of information we don't want to have here, but the key is to limit the vertical speed. You don't want to be heading towards the terrain too quickly. And you see it rocking back and forth, that's a suboptimal thing, but the reason is it's trying to keep close to negative 50 is what it is. I could lighten it up a little bit and give it some more uh, tolerance to that and uh, sort of have it not go to the extremes. But for now we have it this way, <laughs> so anyway. As you can see it has thrall down again. And that's because we're getting close. You can see the target difference is now within one kilometer. So it's done a good job so far. Uh, but now it wants to go down more. So it's allowing for larger vertical speed here. Since we're pretty much lined up there. And we're getting close to where it's more of a suicide burn and less of a trying to aim at the target situation. Well, it's gotten negative on the suicide burn countdown, so I really hope it knows what it's doing. Yeah, something went horribly wrong. It's doomed. Oops. Well, that can happen. But let's not let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. So I'm gonna load the save and land it manually instead. Okay, so picking up from here as we separate it away from the command module. And let's get closer. I need the landing location again. Actually, now more than ever, it's important to have the information from MechJeb for my reference. Make sure you're in line with the target. Go retrograde and make sure that your periapsis is just negative. Oops. Just negative. And that note I generally make 90 degrees away, but I think they probably did it a little bit earlier. But 90 degrees away allows you to change the inclination most effectively with the least amount of delta V. So most of this right now is just the inclination change that I'm doing. For the lunar module, the RCS uses the same propellant as the main engines, so we don't have to watch it quite so much. So, estimating the landing spot. Well, we better be able to kill our 1600 meters per second in time. The whole stage takes 9 minutes, but we can throttle down. So let's say we're going to take 9 minutes. And so we, we want to be 9 minutes away from this point when we start our retro burn. Uh, and so this is 24 minutes. And so about 15 minutes we'll start the retro burn. 
no, not node, retrograde, or surface negative would be a good choice. So under surface, S fell negative. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that and minor ignition. So just the 10% or however it is at low thrust. And since we do need to head further south, we will increase the yaw. Oops, we lost the target. This might have been a little bit early. But alright, let me go to full thrust and take that off. Our pitch is so that we don't descend too quickly and also so that the target difference doesn't close too quickly. We're using that as a reference as well. I probably wouldn't let the suicide burn countdown tick up. Well, I am letting it tick up now. But that's not a great indicator considering our trajectory is not straight down. But the target difference is coming in a little bit quickly, so I'll pitch up. Can also throttle down. You can see throttling down, it holds a little bit steadier on that. So the numbers I'm interested in are the vertical speed here, suicide burn countdown, and that target difference. The reason I would like to use a KOS script for this is of course I would like this view, right, for cinematics. But something went wrong and I don't know what yet. Of course that script has worked before because I've recorded that before with that view as it is. but. Definitely didn't work this time. In fact, it's basically the same script that uh, lands the Kumo lander, which I've done recently. Well, more than negative 100 worries me, so... I'm gonna pitch up a little bit more. So, throttling up lets the suicide burn countdown have more time, but our target difference gets pulled in, and the vertical speed gets back to negative 100. So you can see we're pulling that in with the throttle up. If I want to uh, push that out, I'll pitch up and throttle down. So we can throttle down here, and now the suicide burn countdown is going down. The vertical speed goes, well, has a greater magnitude, let's put it that way. And then that's two kilometers. I'll pitch up a little bit. Generally going between 10 and 15 degrees above the retrograde marker. This is partly because it's not a pure suicide burn, right? We're gonna want to be over the surface and check things out before landing, as Neil Armstrong did for quite a bit. Delta V-wise, we have a lot left considering the speed we have to burn off. We start off with 900 extra, we still have, you know, maybe 750. So we're ending up about 500 meters beyond it and throttling down so that we keep going down here. We're not going that, that fast right now. Well, I can't even tell the difference on the map. Well, I'm just gonna kill the horizontal speed now. Even if it throws me off a little bit. I could get closer, but I guess we can do a sort of hovering thing. We can get closer by just sort of leaning towards it here, like this. We do have to watch our fuel, though. Yeah, I think I should just land. <laughs> this, this is being too, too cute right now. Well, I don't see any monument in sight. There ought to be a monument. So it is just one continuous burn. There's no shutdown of the engines in the middle. I mean, engine. I'd like the horizontal speed to be in two digits, if possible, before I go kill rotation. Kill rotation. And then throttle down. Okay, we can be careful here. The engine should be able to throttle down so that you can c continue going down without shutting it off. Important feature for any lunar lander. Uh, 
Okay, that's it. We are down. Okay, RCS off. All right. So now uh, here's the hatch and um, how exactly Jeb actually gets out of that is it's a little bit weird here. Let's let's not bother with that right now. Let me just put them back in. Forget the flag and all. That that's up to you to do. We're late. We're already late. We should just get back. So uh, that is the one. Okay, there's the other one that's just FASA. This is the FASA Katniss one. And we will want the target spacecraft to be right behind us as we launch. We want to catch up to... Oh, uh, right, right ahead of us so that we can catch up to it. In order to launch, we want to shut down the descent engine. And then we'll stage with spacebar and I'll... I guess we'll do kill rotation with the RCS on, but prepare surface that. Yeah, let's just do it that way. Okay. Have I forgotten anything? Throttle up and launch. No, not that one. Bad, bad game. <laughs> uh, no, why, why did you, why did you go up like that? I shut that one down. Oh, okay, 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 shut down. Okay, it's the next staging that we want. I shouldn't have uh, started it with the right click. I should have just used staging, I guess. Okay, now go. Up, up, go, go, go. So much trouble. All right, so we are off. Lost the target. Okay, so heading to target is a good number to have here. And we're going to type in that 263 execute and then start pitching down there's no atmosphere here to deal with margins are pretty good 2200 meters per second here orbit is 1600 it's in a roughly 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer orbit and so anything below that will catch up to it and yeah, in the old days, this would only have one ignition. Now it has 35, so no problems there. We know it had at least two. And that's because one of them was relit. But otherwise, the maneuvers this did were done with its RCS after this uh, main liftoff burn. I mean, I guess... Considering where the descending node is, we can do some of the correction right now. It's close enough. If the descending node starts wandering away, you can't do too much more. So now we're horizontal. Half of the burn left. Yeah, maybe I should have uh, launched a little bit earlier in this case. It's gotten a little bit ahead of us. And now we sort of tangent on one side. I want to meet up with it over there. Not immediately, of course. You're so close to doing the inclination burn right away. We have left over right now 461. In order to do this inclination correction, it's not showing me the maneuver node down there. Why is it not showing? Why is it not showing me the maneuver node? That's a lot more than I thought it would be. Maybe I should do it at the higher up location. I mean, we have it. We have the amount. But yeah, it's not showing me the maneuver nodes. Is it, does it have the maneuver node there? No. Well, I can just do it blindly for now. I think I probably have to restart the game in order to make that work. Okay. Ignition. Well, starting to fuel down, then ignition, relative inclination going down, and shut down. That's close enough. Guess I'll have to get rid of... Oh, control locked. I don't know what's causing a control lock. No, it's just not showing me a whole lot of stuff right now. Yep, the little markers are also not telling the truth. I'm going to use MechJib for that. I'm not going to go through the basics of Rendezvous. but because of whatever glitches are going on right now. 
This might tr not turn out the way I wanted to I'm, anyway, so... Well, that gets us within render range. But not in the place I wanted to rendezvous. It's gotta be going into the nighttime side. I wanted to rendezvous as we go into the daylight side, but no such luck. Okay, we are within render range. And I'm just gonna kill relative velocity. Mostly the command module would have done this stuff. But we have leftover in here anyway, still with 250. Okay, that gets us closer to the command module after a while. And I'm going to point at the command module. And then kill rotation. Over at the command module, uh, FASA has a weird thing with its RCS. It's not actually firing the RCS, it just looks like it. We go to the tracking station and come back. And it'll be fine. Maybe that'll even solve our problem with the maneuver, but I'm not sure. Okay, set as target. No more firing of RCS. Checking out our Delta V here. We've got 1,090. We need 800 to go home. Maybe a little bit more than 800. Reserve 900. So a little bit tight, but we've got it. Okay, same basic principle of how to dock. Though, here we can have this orient too. Okay, we have connected. Let's get the crew back over before we forget. Uh, okay, transfer. Okay, and with that done, we can decouple. Separate. And you can... well, okay, you can't. Uh, I don't think there's any control here. Maybe there is. Let's see. Yeah, we can't control this. We ought to be able to. They were able to remote control the ascent module in order to smash it into the moon or, in one case, uh, send it into interplanetary space. But for now, we are going to focus on getting home here. As far as accurately getting home to a particular location on Earth, I can't do that. <laughs> so. Maybe, maybe if I thought about it real hard, I could, but uh, I don't know about that. So we're just going to go home and over on this side, whatever it is, one o'clock, make your maneuver prograde about 800 meters per second, and we can get right into the atmosphere. And I would go to 50 to 60 kilometers let's say 60. Well, maybe a little bit lower will be fine. But we'll fine tune that with RCS later. And go. Okay, and the rest of RCS. See the periaps, the actual periaps is there, and just pressing H to bring that periapsis down. And this is by far the best place to do it, rather than a mid-course correction. Now I'll go for 56. Okay, so departing the moon. Off we go. Okay, and back to Earth. Somehow I always manage to come down at night, <laughs> which you're not supposed to. Uh, but anyway. So add that to the list of things that I've got wrong here. But service module, decoupler, and the RCS on the command module, which we have so far not used. Let's just get the RCS ready first. And then turn normal. Well, maybe we should have turned normal first, then got that RCS ready. Sure, mostly everything's topped off there. Okay, separation of the service module. Okay, surface negative initially, though I'll just take manual control eventually. And that's because Smart ASS likes to hold the pitch in yaw even though it doesn't need to. And we are going to turn on the scent mode so that we can do a lifting re-entry to limit g-forces. So 
it tends to be sideways, so we're probably going to orient like this with this particular version of the pod. And really, well, okay, forget it, forget, forget. More like this. Maybe SAS will be fine. We're sort of glowing. So, lifting entry. But we're going to roll to the opposite position to make sure that we actually come straight down instead of skipping out. So, here, before our periapsis gets too high. This will push our periapsis down. I have wanted to do that a little bit earlier. Uh, that's more than good enough. Let's go back to heads up to this orientation here to limit g-forces again. So I allowed a little bit more g-force than I should have, but okay, we do go up here. So now maybe we should heads down again the exact profile you might be able to get from re-entry of the game but there the g-force is going down so it's okay to be in this position right now but just keep an eye on the g-force and this is just to limit the skip out and also they could target a particular location for landing I can't but they could okay we're going to have increased g-force again. We're going down pretty fast, so I'm going to roll again. At this point, we can just stay in this position. We are going up a little bit, but we're certainly not going to go up very much. And let's just to uh, make it a little bit softer on them. As we go back down here, we're going to get another peak in g-force. It would have come straight down. So basically, uh, we probably wanted to aim a little bit lower than the 56 kilometers that I got. But then things are going to happen rather quickly, so keep that in mind. You really have to get, uh, be on, on your game as far as rolling it around. Well, we're about out of the RCS propellant. But at this point, we can just let it do its thing. Is it normal for it to spin? Yes, basically. Because of the offset uh, center mass. What the descent mode does is offset the center of mass, which it would have had in order to do the lifting entry. And so ultimately, you'll be left sort of rotating like this. The RCS is not strong enough to permanently hold it once it gets into a thicker part of the atmosphere. Okay, once we are below the speed of sound, we can separate off the aero cap. But I was controlling from the docking port, so we need to switch back to this. And then uh, deploy chute will just arm it. And these chutes are configured to pre-deploy at about three kilometers and then finally deploy at around 700 meters okay there we go and the nominal speed is around nine meters per second for splashdown and there we are we didn't even hear the splash because we were so far away all right so with that recover vessel once it's stable enough and there you have it. That is running the Apollo mission with the craft file previously uh, provided in the video description of the previous video with FASA and the Katniss mod. I'll link that again in this video. So it'll have the craft file again, though you have to install the mods properly. And it'll also have the 
the launch script. So, all right, there you have it. Uh, some inaccuracies. We arrived a little bit late uh, because we captured a little bit late around the moon and everything. Um, still wondering about the alignment and all that business, but I'll set that aside for now. I feel like I need to move the moon around a little bit. It was certainly dark when we were supposed to... I mean, it, we landed late and it was still dark there. So something's wrong. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.